Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today is video number 121 of Small Engines Questions and Answers and I want to welcome back everybody today. Also, I want to welcome all my new subscribers to my channel as well. Now, the spring is fast approaching, but we're still getting cold weather. I'm filming this a little bit earlier in the week. As you can see, my wood stove behind me is going full tilt. It's approximately minus 10 degrees Celsius outside, so the winter is still hanging on here. So you're still going to see a few snowblower questions answered today. And today I'm sharing some information that a YouTuber sent me. His name is Anthony Ludden. And he sent me a reminder about a little vent hole on Tecumseh carburetors that if that hole is plugged, your carburetor may be flooding even though you've replaced all the parts in it. I'm just going to show you on a carburetor here what that little hole is. So here's a Tecumseh carburetor and as you can see there's a very small hole right here where my finger is. Now this guy's carburetor was flooding even after replacing parts and he figured out that this little hole here was plugged. You can use a wire from a twist tie or wire brush, run it through it. Now this little hole here is called an external atmospheric vent and it's very critical that this hole is unplugged in order for your carburetor to work properly. So always check this little hole when you clean your carburetor or rebuild it. And thanks again to the YouTuber for sending that information to us. Also I'm going to put a link that the YouTuber sent me where it shows pictures of this carburetor and you'll see it's photo number 12 in the web page when you get there. In my next question a YouTuber asked me why does my weed eater run after I've cleaned the carburetor? Well usually there's more to it than just cleaning the carb especially on two cycle equipment. There's going to be diaphragms in the carburetor that need to be replaced and in some cases the whole carburetor. So here's a weed whacker here and as you can see it's one of these carburetors over here. It's usually Azama or Walbro. So just cleaning the carb usually will not be enough. Sometimes you even have to replace the fuel filter in the tank, the fuel lines, the diaphragms, tighten up all the bolts because sometimes the vibration makes them come loose, especially where the carb adapter is. And it's the same thing for these little blowers here. Sometimes the carb adapter gets loose and then your engine won't run right. So sometimes you have to remove the carburetor in order to tighten up the adapter over here because it's two sets of bolts holding these two items. So the bolts hold the adapter and then other bolts or nuts or studs hold the carburetor on that adapter. I've seen often the carburetor is nice and tight but the adapter is loose right at the engine and because of that people have a hard time realizing what it is that's causing their problem. In another question a YouTuber was asking me why is there fuel coming out of the gas tank of my weed eater? I'm just going to use this blower here as an example. As you can see here basically the fuel lines make a complete seal between the gas tank and the fuel in it. So in a matter of just a few years sometimes the fuel lines get brittle or hard and then the fuel can leak out. So while you're rebuilding the carb for the price of the fuel lines you might as well replace them. The fuel line that I recommend for this is a Poland fuel line or Tigon fuel line. I find it's really good to make a nice tight seal in the tank holes and that fuel line stays nice and soft for quite a few years. Now my next question a YouTuber asked me, how do you fix a primer bulb that doesn't want to retract? Well the best way to fix a primer bulb that won't retract back in its original position is to just replace it. For example on this weed eater here there's a primer bulb over here and when you press it it should come back immediately like that. Even if there's a bit of a delay it's normal so this bulb here is in perfect condition but if it didn't come back then just replace it. Sometimes these bulbs get cracked as well and you're going to get a fuel leak from the primer bulb itself. So it could look like it's the gas tank leaking when it's actually the primer bulb. Also a small engine mechanic teacher told me that if the little screen inside the carburetor is plugged it can cause the primer bulb not to come back properly. Also I've noticed too if you've got bad diaphragms or if they were not installed properly that can also be the cause. And here's a similar primer bulb as that one over there. So as you can see it just snaps in there and then you make sure to connect the fuel lines to the exact position that they were before. And that's all there is. Usually you can buy these under 10 bucks and it may solve your problems in some cases. And it's the same on Tecumseh engines. If the bulb doesn't want to come back, then make sure to replace it. 
Sometimes though you may want to make sure that the primer line isn't plugged because it could keep the primer in like this and that's on all equipment by the way. So you may want to disconnect the primer bulb line before actually buying a new primer to make sure that it's not the line that's plugged. However, sometimes these bulbs do go bad and they do not retract. In my next question, somebody asked me when I put away stuff and it has a metal fuel tank, just like this Honda snowblower over here, is it better to keep a lot of fuel in the tank to prevent rust? Well, my answer to that would have to be yes, keep it almost full or full, and it does seem to slow down the rust. A lot of people do that with their motorcycles because usually they're all metal fuel tanks. And if you find by the time you go to use your equipment again in the next season, if you think the gas is old, then you can always drain it and replace it with fresh gas. Or you can store it with some fuel stabilizer and your fuel may still be good when you go to use your equipment again. Some fuel stabilizers say that the fuel will be good for up to six months. By the way, I do have a video that shows how to put away your snowblower for the summer. I'm not sure if I talked in that video that if your snowblower has a metal fuel tank to keep a lot of fuel. Anyways, I'm mentioning it today now. But what I'm going to do is put the link to that video under this video today so you can go have a look for it. We are in the spring season and pretty soon you're going to be putting away your snowblower and getting your lawnmowers out. Now another question I often get from YouTubers and also people who come into my shop is are Honda snowblowers expensive to repair when you compare them to other snowblowers, for example, like the Murray or Craftsman snowblower over there? Well, I can tell you for certainty that Honda snowblowers are a lot more expensive to repair than your average snowblower. The two main reasons that I found contribute to that are that the parts are expensive and also that the labor is more intensive. So it's going to take you a lot more time to repair a Honda snowblower than it does the average snowblower out there. For example, it takes me approximately three times more time to replace the auger belt on this snowblower than it does on that Craftsman over there. I find them very labor intensive. There's a lot of parts to remove, like for example, just removing the belts. But in other instances, to remove the whole front auger system, I find it easier on this snowblower here than on the Craftsman. I can remove the whole auger assembly from the Honda just by removing a few bolts without separating the blower in half. But that's the rare exception. Most of the time, you're looking at at least twice the labor. So before you buy a new snowblower, just take everything into consideration. Also, if you do buy a Honda snowblower, make sure you get the maintenance done every year on it. Because I've noticed that people have skipped that and then they pay the price later. A lot of the times, these Honda snowblowers break because of owner neglect. Most of the repairs I've done on these blowers have not been because of used parts, but because things went without maintenance. And my last question today is sometimes YouTubers ask me, do you work on cars? Well, I do work on cars, but only on my own vehicle. I do what I can. If I can't do it, then I have to take it to a car shop. Usually it goes hand in hand. If you can do repairs on small motors, you can repair your own car to a certain extent. Again, guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for taking the time to come watch my video today and have yourselves a great weekend.